Good afternoon. Thank you everyone for being here this afternoon. I want to take some time, a few minutes, to provide some updates regarding three initiatives I spoke about last time I was here. Before I provide those updates, I want to take a moment to share some encouraging news. Nevada administered close to 20% more COVID-19 vaccines than the national average during our last update. Let's keep this up. Vaccinating more people keeps people safe. Nevada was the first state to reinstate indoor masking in areas of substantial and high transmission regardless of vaccination status. We are now seeing a slowing of COVID-19 growth in our state. In fact, Nevada has had the second slowest COVID-19 growth in the nation over the past two weeks at 15% compared to the national average of 118%. We know masks are an effective mitigation strategy and remain a critical tool to protect our healthcare system and slow the spread while we work to get more people vaccinated. As you may remember, a little more than a week and a half ago, I spoke about three areas the state is working on to help manage this pandemic and get shots in arms. First, I asked the medical advisors to look at vaccination requirements for all students attending in-person classes at our public colleges and universities under the Nevada System of Higher Education, NSHE. The MAT agreed with the unanimous recommendation from the NSHE COVID-19 Task Force to require vaccinations for students while originally on the agenda for September 3rd, the Board of Health has called an emergency meeting to discuss this topic at the end of this week. To all of the higher ed students out there, if you have not yet done so, I want to encourage those who plan to return to in-person learning to get your COVID-19 vaccination before returning to campus. Additionally, I asked medical advisors for a vaccination recommendation regarding those who work with vulnerable populations. These recommendations will help guide conversations and actions we can take moving forward and we are currently working with officials and partners to discuss and determine next steps. We will provide updates to explore policy options. The final topic, topic I discussed in my last press conference, though not be, one I will be discussing in more detail today, was related to how we make large gatherings safer in Nevada. As we all know, Nevada is an incredible location for concerts, sporting events, and so much more. In fact, I would argue we are the best at those venues. That's great for residents and visitors, but can pose challenges during a pandemic. That's why public health officials have been working with event operators and partners to come up with options for hosting safer, large events. The first option is to continue following the current mask requirement that states that all persons in counties with substantial or high community transmission rates are required to wear face coverings while in public indoor spaces, regardless of vaccine status. You have to wear the mask regardless of vaccine status. The sec second option, which becomes effective with this new directive, number 49, provides a masking exception for large event operators that choose to require proof of vaccination for all attendees. Let me explain. If a large event venue chooses to re require vaccination proof for all attendees, those that are fully vaccinated will be allowed to take their masks off. Partially vaccinated attendees may still attend, but they must wear their mask at the event. Additionally, children who are not eligible for vaccination due to their age may attend the event, but must wear a mask. In order to be eligible for this masking exception for fully vaccinated individuals at large indoor events, the following requirements must be met. The venue must have fixed seating capacity of 4,000 people or more. The event must require tickets or registration and be open only to those who have tickets or are registered. The event operator must maintain access control that effectively prevents unticketed or unauthorized persons from attending. Event operators must implement a method of verifying vaccination status that is accurate, effective, and reliable. Staff must be sufficient in number and adequately trained to implement this program. 
And again, event operators may choose to admit attendees who are only pa partially vaccinated, but those attendees must continue to wear a mask during the event. Event operators must have a system in place to distinguish attendees who are fully vaccinated from those who are only partially vaccinated and must enforce the mask requirement for all attendees who are not fully vaccinated during the event. If someone fails to provide proof of COVID-19 vaccination, they must not be admitted. This gives an option for event organizers to choose between requiring masks indoors for all attendees, regardless of vaccination status, or making the choice to only allow vaccinated individuals into their events and letting the fully vaccinated take their masks off. I want to be clear, this is not a requirement to show proof of vaccination to attend a large event. This is not a mandate. It is an optional exception to the general mask requirement if the event operator chooses to require proof of vaccination for all attendees. We're giving our private sector partners the choices and flexibility to lead in this area. And I'm so proud of the many that have already begun leading. We've seen many Nevada event operators and businesses in the last two weeks step up and make decisions to increase vaccination rates and thus the safety of their employees and their guests. We know that these for these policies to be successful, it takes public sector action, the private sector and the general public to work together and to get it right. My goal with today's new policy choice is to provide the private sector more options that come with the reward for the public, the ability to take off their masks during a concert or game if and only if they are fully vaccinated. And of course, we hope that this helps get more vac Nevada's vaccinated so that we can get out of this pandemic. That's why state health officials stand ready to work with the event operators to stand up vaccine opportunities at these event sites to give all attendees every chance to get their shot and attend the event. Again, at this time, this directive applies to large ticketed gatherings and venues with fixed seating over 4,000 or more and locations where venue and event operations can effectively control access to the event to make sure tickets or registration is adequately verified. As has been the case since the start of the pandemic, a private entity or local government can always implement stronger mitigation strategies if they choose. To the smaller venues and businesses out there who are interested in having this option available to them. I want to make sure you know that I share that goal. As we implement this policy for our largest venues, please know we'll be working to expand this option to every venue and business in the state. We'll be reaching out to our Chambers of Commerce and other partners to make sure we get this right as we work to expand the option. The emergency directive and more guidance will be released later this evening. Thank you for all, all of you for being here. I want to remind Nevadans that it's easier than ever to get the COVID-19 vaccination. The vaccines are free, they're safe, and they're effective. Visit nvcovidfighter.org to find a clinic near you. I would now be happy to take a few questions. No, that, that isn't what happens here. What this is, is if the venue chooses that everybody will be vaccinated, everybody in the event, not a negative test, everybody in the event will have initiated their vaccine, then this option would be available to them. With exception to children who are not eligible to get the vaccine. They would be required to maintain wearing a mask at all times, but there would be an exception for them, yes. Okay, anyone under the age of 12? Correct. Okay, thank you. So, Ken at the AP? Uh, Governor. Thanks. Um, for those who might confuse this, if, if there's a distinction between this and a vaccine passport, please address uh, any differences. Th this is an option that we're making available to our businesses. If they choose to go down path A, 
they can maintain what we have right now, the status quo, which is everybody has to wear a mask at all times inside the venue. If they choose to go down path B, it requires that everybody be vaccinated. At least they have their initial dose, and if they have the initial dose, they have to wear their mask. But if everybody is vaccinated, they can take off their masks. So not a vaccine passport? No, not a vaccine passport. We'll go Dana, and then I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but we'll go Dana first. Governor, um, do you really think that a policy like that could be adequately enforced, given you know, the, the danger of the Well, I, I wasn't at the event, but I saw your comments that it wasn't enforced, and I don't know. Uh, this would eliminate that enforcement problem. If everybody walking in through the turnstile has to prove that they're vaccinated, we won't have them have to wear masks. That's what's going to eliminate. Then they won't have to have hundreds of ushers walking around saying, your mask is slipping, cover your nose, you don't have a mask on. This would give the event operator an option. They can go down one path and have to enforce the rules, or go down path B and uh, have people be able to take their masks off. And, and still enforce people who are there who are not vaccinated and have to wear their masks on, right? There won't be people there that are not vaccinated. No, I thought you said that there are people who are not vaccinated could still come but not. But they no. Wear their masks on. If they choose option B, everyone going into the stadium will have to have received at least their first dose. And the other No, there would not be that option. If the venue, for example, a football game, decided they want to pursue option B for public safety reasons and for their own business interests and have everybody vaccinated, and they say that you have to have initiated your vaccine, either your first one, you can get your first one in the parking lot, we're trying to put up vaccination sites in their form, or you're fully vaccinated. You can do that. If you don't have a vaccine, your first vaccine, and you want to go to the game, you can't go. Yeah, if, if, no, if you're not fully vaccinated, if you get to the game, for example, uh -huh. and you're not vaccinated, and I say, look, you can go over to that tent and get your first vaccine, and you go over to that tent, you get your first vaccine, and you come back, you can now attend the event with your mask on. But once you've been fully vaccinated, which is two weeks after your second dose, then you don't have to wear the mask. So my question is, how do you police a situation like that when you have a hybrid of some fully vaccinated, not masked, some not you, that will be up to uh, the venue operator. We'll have to come up with a plan that they can identify the difference between the two of them. Now, whether that's through a wristband, it's through some other technology, that would be up to them. They'd have to present us with a plan. Okay, so my original question is, do you think that that kind of a scenario could adequately be enforced? I do. Okay. I do. Because, and I think that it's going to encourage a lot of people to get that vaccine, both the first and the second dose. They're going to say, I want to take my mask off and go to the Raider game. So they're going to go over and get the vaccine. And two weeks later, they might do it begrudgingly. They're going to go get their second vaccine. So that's the hope. All right, we'll go. I'm sorry, I don't know your name back here. And then we'll come, Ricky. John Donald from KPNB. Um, Lamping Elementary School in Henderson announced that they're going distance learning for two weeks because of COVID exposure. I mean, what level of anger has to exist to push an entire school to do something like that? And what does that mean for all schools in the near future if that kind of thing keeps happening? That uh, authority was relegated to the school districts in the local areas, so uh, I'm, under, I'm aware of the situation. I just became aware of the situation late this afternoon that they had Lampin Elementary School, so confident that the... And then we just heard Governor Steve Sistelak essentially saying that uh, private businesses, venues larger than uh, 4,000 seating capacity can now restrict access for people who do not have the vaccine. So we'll have more on that tonight at 6 o'clock and at